Hi, welcome to G Power. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of what it looks like and how it all works, and then I'm going to give you some um, practice problems, and then I really just just play with it, see what you find. So first of all, there are different kinds. So we can have this exact, which tends to be the default. So we could do this with correlations. We can do it with proportions. We can work with t-tests, and then we have a lot of different options with t-tests. We are going to focus on the f-test. So we're moving into ANOVA, and I want to kind of play with this here. So with the f-test, we have a lot of different options. So we are going to do fixed effects one way. When we get to um, repeated measures, we will talk about MANOVA. We can do all kinds of different things, between factors, within factors. But we're just going to go with fixed effects, omnibus, one way. Then we have to choose what type of power analysis we are curious about. So a priori or post hoc or any of the other ones of these. <laughs> So really what it comes down to is this part right here. What are we trying to do? So if we have these things, if we're given alpha power and effect size, let's compute, compute sorry, the required sample size. So before a study even starts, do we have enough people in our study to achieve the power to be as confident as we want to be and with considering the effect size that we actually have? So let's click on that one. So effect size here is based on F. This is really similar to Cohen's D. When we click on it or hover, it tells us what a small, medium, and large means. So if we have a medium effect size, we'll change that to 0.25. Our error, this is our alpha. So here we are 95% confident and our alpha is 0.05. So our power in this case is the opposite. And since it's ANOVA, we have more than one group. If we were doing a t-test, we would have two groups. If we were doing a correlation, we would have two. So we're doing a multivariate correlation, which gets confusing. But here we are in ANOVA, so how many groups do we have in the first place? Then we say calculate. Our actual power, so is our estimated power, actual power was the same. And it's telling me that I need 305 people. Based on these estimates beforehand, my sample needs to include 305 people. That's awesome. Let's say that I have 10 groups. Recalculate, I now need more people. What if I have a smaller effect size? I need a lot more people. Versus if I have a large effect size, I only need 160 people. So you can play with a bunch of different things and that really helps us figure out how many people do we need beforehand. Nope. Let's change to a post hoc. We can also estimate required, so sorry, we can also estimate our required sample size. So we could do a post hoc, and this is, would be afterwards to see what our actual power was. So if we know the sample size, we know how many groups, we knew the effect size, what was our actual power after the study? Which can be really unfortunate if you didn't have enough power after a study is complete. So 0.110, small effect size. Let's say we had a sample of 100. We have 10 groups. Our power was not even close to being enough. And you can see this with our groups. Like the two distributions are right on top of each other, not even close. But let's say I have an effect size of 40. All of a sudden, I'm back within range. So my power here is 0.77. So we're looking a little bit closer at being acceptable. If instead I had a thousand people and let's say five groups, then I had incredibly good power. So that's way above 0.9. Let's say I had a small effect size with a thousand people and five groups, then I'm still within range, but it changes quite a bit. So spend some time with this. You can also play, sorry, um, with t-tests. If you want to look at t-tests, so this would be dependent, meaning a pre-post. Independent would mean two different groups. Um, and you can also look at differences with one sample to a population. 
So play around with that and start working on the practice problems.